Spurs fans are relishing the fresh start to the season as they witness their club soar high in the league standings, scoring an impressive 11 goals and winning 3 out of 4 games. It's not only their results, but also their bright attacking football that has breathed new life into the team and is slowly winning back the hearts of their fans. And much of the credit for this transformation must go to their new manager, Ange Postacoglu. Last season was a difficult one for Spurs fans to watch. Their club slumped to their worst league finish in 14 years, while across North London, rivals Arsenal very nearly won the title. With Manchester City looking like a team on steroids and other teams around them improving, the dream of ending their famed and now very memeable trophy drought, which stretches back to 2008, seemed a long way away. After the passive, reactive, and often dire football played under Mourinho, Nuno, and Conte, the most anticipated requirement of the next managerial appointment was the introduction of entertaining football. Because if the destination, in this case trophies, feels elusive, you might as well enjoy the journey, right? That's where Postacoglu comes in. The Australian has won it all at Celtic, but trophies weren't all that he thought about. This is what Postacoglu said last season with his Celtic side chasing a club record for goals scored in a season, which they came incredibly close to achieving, falling just two goals short of the 1915-16 tally of 116 goals. We were on the verge of greatness, we were this close. This emphasis on goals over results is a refreshing departure from the typical pragmatism observed in the pursuit of titles by bigger clubs. We saw this last season with Barcelona grinding out narrow 1-0 victories to secure La Liga, and Inter's pragmatic approach on their path to the Champions League final, which contrasted with their domestic style of play. It sums up the end goal behind the footballing philosophy that is now widely coined Ange Ball. But what exactly is Ange Ball? Postecoglou is incredibly principled when it comes to the football he wants his teams to play. At the forefront, he wants to entertain, and he wants his players to be brave in possession and keep trying to play out from the back, under pressure, regardless of failures. Like many renowned strategists of the modern game, his key focus is on dictating the tempo of the match by limiting the opposition's possession. Ange Ball, at its core, draws inspiration from both Italian and Dutch styles of football, but also incorporates modern tactics prevalent among Europe's elite clubs. It revolves around coordinated movement and staying compact between the lines to maintain defensive solidity and facilitate quick transitions. In attack, it employs short passing and dynamic off-the-ball runs to stretch the opposing defense and create scoring opportunities. It's also no secret that Postacoglu likes his fullbacks to invert to have a numerical advantage in central midfield when his team has the ball, tacking in to join the number 6 and allow the wingers and attacking mids to push forward. His objective is for his team to embrace a positional style of play and actively push forward. They are encouraged to take risks while progressing the ball through the thirds, even if it means making occasional mistakes. When out of possession, Ange Ball involves an assertive pressing game to win back possession quickly and disrupt the opponent's build-up play. With Ange Ball defined and visualized, let's analyze how Postacoglu has put it into practice at Tottenham. Postacoglu has stuck with this starting lineup with a 4-2-3-1 formation on paper. However, in possession, the shape transforms into a dynamic 2-3-2-3 formation. Udogi and Poro, the fullbacks, would tuck into midfield to support Basuma, enabling Saar and Madison to push forward. A crucial aspect of this vertical shape is the concept of passing backwards to go forward. It triggers the opponent's high press, which Spurs would then attempt to bypass through quick passes or carries. To aid their build-up, Saar and Madison frequently drop deep from their advanced positions into their own third. While dropping deep serves as the first part of the plan, the second part would involve various positional interchanges between the fullbacks and central midfielders to disrupt the opposing team's structure. Examples of the types of positional interchanges made were Bissouma moving to the left-back spot. Madison dropping deeper while Udogi advanced higher, and Saar and Poro adjusting their positions accordingly. These tactical adjustments keep the opposition off balance and create opportunities for Spurs to exploit. In attack, despite concerns that Tottenham would regress following the departure of Harry Kane to Bayern this summer, that has so far not been the case. 
They have outperformed their expected goals across the opening four games, with 11 goals scored from an expected goals of 7.34. Perhaps most importantly for the long term, they have had six different goal scorers. This is a crucial attribute to have in their post Harry Kane era. Last season, the England forward scored 43% of Spurs' league goals and the highest percentage in the league, essentially making them the most one man team in terms of goal scoring. But not only are the goals now coming from multiple players, the team has also varied their modes of attack and look freer without Kane. Their 11 strikes have come from set pieces, through balls into the box, close range finishes from cutbacks, shots from outside the box, and, as was mostly the case against Burnley, counterattacks. Postacoglu has changed so much about this Spurs team. Even without an out and out striker, their forward line boasts the ability to share the goal scoring burden. Arsenal proved that last season, hitting their highest league goal tally of 88 goals despite not having a single player score more than 15. There will be days when opposing teams sit deep and frustrate them, but with the variations Spurs have showcased in just 4 matches, they should have ample alternatives to rely on when a plan B is required. There's a plan B is there? It's just plan A was so brilliantly devised I wouldn't have thought we'd need a plan B. Postacoglu switched up his front line against Burnley, opting for Son over Richarlison at the centre forward position, and boy was this a stroke of genius. The South Korean, who had previously won the Golden Boot with 23 goals two seasons ago but had a relatively quieter campaign last season, showcased his ruthlessness once more with a hat-trick. Amid question marks about Spurs not bringing in an out-and-out -out replacement for Kane, I believe Postacoglu knew he already had a good option in Son. Anchball is not without its share of potential challenges too, however. The obvious danger is that Postacoglu is fine with sacrificing some defensive stability in search of goals. Spurs' aggressive pressing and high defensive line make them vulnerable, and if opponents can bypass their initial press, it opens up space behind their defense for counterattacks. This vulnerability is particularly evident on the flanks, where Udogi and Poro excel more as attacking fullbacks than defensive ones. Against Burnley, Spurs conceded in the opening 5 minutes and in injury time due to vulnerabilities on their right side, highlighting the crucial importance of compactness and minimizing gaps between the lines in Ange Ball. As such, defense may remain a weak point for the side, and we can expect them to struggle at times this season, especially against bigger teams that can punish them. Postacoglu's attacking approach involves midfielders making forward runs and creating overloads in the half spaces, utilizing diamonds and rotational positioning to progress up the field. However, a tactical issue arises with his starting wingers Son and Kulusevski, as they tend to cut inside on the stronger foot. But to make half space attacking effective, the wingers must stay wide near the touchline to stretch the opposing defense and create gaps for the half space attackers to exploit. Dribbling from out wide as opposed to down the half space also means opposing defenders can't double up against you. Nonetheless, with Son likely to continue as a centre forward and the options to bring on pacey outside wingers Brennan Johnson and Manor Solomon, Postacoglu should have no problems overcoming this challenge. While it's still early days, Spurs' absence from European competitions this season and their early exit from the Carabao Cup could position them as strong challengers for a top 4 spot. What a story they would write if they went on to clinch the league title outright. The jump from Conte's football to Ange Ball is a significant one, and it wouldn't be surprising if they face a dip in form or stumble during the season while adapting to their new tactics. However, given sufficient time, Postacoglu is very likely to build an entertaining team that can bring trophies within reach. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more exciting football news, stories, and insights. Also, don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't miss a beat.